Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Hello, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the L&D Masterclass. Today, we're going to walk you through um, a strategic model for how to think about business impact in learning and development. So our title today is Visualizing Business Impact. I hope you guys enjoy this. I put a lot of work into it for you. And please feel free to use the chat. I will monitor the chat as we go throughout. I'll monitor the Q&A and I will pause and answer questions as we go through. I'm so thrilled to be here. I was happy watching some of the prior sessions and I hope that what you learned in the previous sessions, you will be able to apply um, back on the job immediately, right? That's what we want is business impact for all and specifically with the L&D function. So let me start with a little introduction of myself um, to tell you to warrant to show you why I warrant your time today and to give you a little bit of background on why um, how that I the experience that I have in the L&D space. So I've been in L&D for over 25 years, primarily as a strategic learning consultant, working with organizations of all sizes. I wrote a book and so we have it on my slide. I also have it here to show you called Be More Strategic in Business, How to Win Through Smarter, uh, Stronger Leadership and Smarter Decisions. And I wrote my book with my co-author, Diana Thomas. Diana was the chief learning officer for McDonald's. I partnered with Diana um, in I think about 2014, 12, 12, 13, and 14 to build out the measurement system for McDonald's. I built measurement systems for large organizations such as Booz Allen Hamilton, a consulting practice here in the US, automotive industry, pharmaceutical industries, a lot of different organizations. Um, like I said, I've been in L&D over 25 years. And back in the early 2000s, a business partner and I were going door to door pitching what we called um, multiple regression, right? But it's what we know today as predictive analytics. So a little ahead of my time, but I've been thinking about this space and doing this work for a very long time. And so I've come up with a strategic framework for how to think about measurement in the L&D space. And I wanna propose a model to you today and show you how you can have not only the L&D leaders think strategically and show up as strategic performance consultants, but also have everyone in the L&D function think about the impact they're trying to drive for the organization. So um, the model that we're going to walk through today is outlined in my book as well. So let's get started. So with your key, with the keynote with Gianni, he made a couple of points that I thought were really interesting and relevant. I want to tie it back today. So he says that business cases built on assumptions can change the world. And we know that that's some that's the place we have to start in business, right? We start with assumptions. Um, but they're not just guesses. It's not just a finger in the wind, right? It's actually an educated guess. So I'm going to show you a model today that we start with assumptions. We start with some educated guesses and that are estimates that eventually become evidence based because we collect data, analyze the data, and then we actually have evidence to drive and show business impact. But you have to start somewhere and we start with assumptions. Um, and then, then Gianni also said that without a business case, learning will be seen as an important cost center, but not as a strategic capability. And if we show up as not strategic, uh, then we will per be perceived as a cost center, right? Whether we are a cost center or not, in reality, we want to show up as strategic performance consultants and strategic business partners. Um, and so what I want to do is share a framework today to help you think about that and then share this, go back to the office and share this idea with your teams um, on how to think more strategically about the L&D function and how you drive business impact. So I have a poll. Let's pull up the first poll. You can see the questions here while we're pulling the poll up. So do you currently measure the business impact of your learning investments? And this is a select all, so select as many as you like. No, because no one is asking for it. No, we are not sure how to measure business impact that will be believable. Sometimes when requested only, sometimes ROI only. Yes, we have a robust business impact measurement approach for strategic initiatives, or I do not know. 
So select all that you would like to. And then we will publish the poll in about 15 seconds when everybody has a chance to think about it. Okay, we can publish the poll result results. I'm not seeing the results come through. Maybe are they publishing on my side? Let me see. Okay, I'm not seeing the poll results come through on my side. That's okay. That happens. I'm not seeing the results. Okay, so they're not, you guys, are, you're not seeing them either. Okay. All right, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just move on. This was just going to help me level set, you know, through our conversation. Um, if you, if you would pop in, um, in the chat, could you then just say yes, no, or sometimes in the chat, just to give me a feel overall for if you're currently measuring the business impact of your learning investments in the chat, just pop in yes, no, or sometimes. All right. We got some, we got sometimes coming through sometimes ROI. All right. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Yes, yes, yes. Looking good. We got one. No, we got a lot of sometimes. All right. That looks great. All right. We got a no. I don't know how to do it. All right. Well, I think we have everybody covered here. So if you said yes, and you're an expert in measuring business impact and you're a more mature organization, you're advanced with your analytics. That's great. Maybe I will, uh, you'll pick up a few nuggets today and you'll have some ideas of how to think about this as well and a framework to share with your team. And if you click sometimes, that's great. Again, you'll probably have a few little learning nuggets from today. And if you selected no, that's fantastic. You'll pick up a lot of learning nuggets today. Um, and a framework that you'll be able that will help enable you and empower you to think about business impact um, for your initiatives. OK, I've got another simple poll. Let's see if this one works. Maybe I made this one a little easier for us. So which of the following describes your L&D function? Um, are you consider and this is a select all again. Are you a cost center, a profit generating function? And are you perceived as an organizational critical strategic capability? or I do not know. So you can answer the poll now and let's see if we can get these results through. I'll give you about 10 seconds to take some time. And again, this is a select all, so select as many as you'd like. Okay, we can, let's see if we can view the results. A mixed bag of call center and strategic function. Okay. Okay, maybe we're having a problem viewing the results. Would you guys mind popping in the chat? Um, just call, you can just pop in cost, profit, or strategic. Cost center, cost center, strategic. Oh, great. It's cost center and strategic. Yep. A bit of both. Strategic. 
All righty. Strategic costs, predominantly cost. Yeah. You know, what, what, what do they say? Like every five years, every 10 years, L&D goes through this cycle, right? That organizations can become a cost center. Then they may be tested out as a profit center. You know, you're centralized and you're decentralized and you're centralized again. Then you're federated. Like we play around with all these different models and that's okay, right? That, that's the way we learn because our organizations change and grow. Our leaderships change and grow. Um, but it's fantastic to see so many considered as a strategic function. And I will tell you from my own experience, you know, if there was a silver lining in the pandemic situation, it was when L&D function, right, became, we became the frontline workers for organizations. I felt like I've been waiting 25 years for that to happen to us. I was so tired of hearing, how, Stacey, how do we get a seat at the table? We need to be at the table. And it was ridiculous because we weren't showing up as strategic. When you are, you have a seat at the table. You don't have to ask, ask for a seat at the table. You're perceived as strategic a value to the organization and you're brought to the table. You're required to be at the table. So the pandemic, unfortunately, required us to get there. We all of a sudden became frontline workers um, when we were sort of just like under the hood, um, driving the engine of the organization, the workforce. So um, it's great to see so many um, of you perceived as strategic organizations. I just wonder if that's how you were in the past, if the pandemic changed that at all. Um, or if you had any input into that. Um, so I think it's fantastic uh, how l and is perceived now, uh, you know, locally, regionally, and globally. And, you know, again, if that was the silver lining to the pandemic, if there was one thing, it was sure that. So great, okay. All right, so here's what I wanna show you. So I have a framework that I've created. And this is a way to think about business impact. So the way you think about this is you start with the vision of your company. And I've, and I've got an example mapped out for you that we're going to walk through. So you think about the vision of your company. And then your vision is driven by strategic goals, right? And then the strategic goals are driven by functional goals. So when you walk your when you have any level of person in your L&D and your L&D organization, and you help them think about this framework, this helps them understand the impact they make on the job. When I speak to many people that are, say, instructional designers, curators, in the analytics team, they don't really think about business impact on their day-to-day -day job. But when you give them a framework of how to think about it, they will think about it. And when you're a leader in the organization, you require everybody to think from a strategic perspective. It really helps them grow and drive the business like you want to. So we have a vision driven by a corporate, uh, by the strategic goals, all driven by the functional goals. And in order to achieve our vision and our goals, we know we need to make investments. And where do we need to make those investments? Well, we decide based on the goals we are trying to accomplish. Right. So we may make certain investments over here on the left and we need those investments to drive the business impact so that we can achieve our functional goals. So we can then achieve our strategic goals so we can realize our beautiful vision that we have set forth. So what I've got. So this is the basic model of the impact blueprint framework. And these two pieces are the bookends. So one end is the investment. And you think about how it impacts. Think about the domino effect, right? We make an investment in a platform, in a learning solution, in resources, in so many different areas. And the reason we make that investment is so that we'll drive business impact so we can achieve our goals to realize our vision. So once you have someone think about that linear process, that gives them the aha moment. Now, strategic leaders, we think like this all the time. But the thing is, our teams may not think like this um, and we don't even know they don't think like this. So this is where we need to step in as leaders and show them how to think strategically so they can show up strategically with your internal and external customers that they're working with. So the framework I want to show you right now is when you have a known investment. So when I get called into organizations to go work with them, they'll say, oh, Stacy, we spent 
you know, $500,000 on this leadership program. Did we achieve business impact? So I'm walking into a situation where the investment is already known. They have an investment in a leadership prog program. Or Stacy, we invested in this um, technology for a digital transformation purpose. Did we get an impact for it? So the way to think about the impact with an investment that's, no that's known is when you think about what's the investment that we made, what's the impact that we expected that investment to make, and then how will that drive the goals? So the way you think about this impact map, when you have a known investment is you work from the left all the way to the right, because we know what the investment is and we know and we want to know what impact is that investment driving. So that that's most situations, right? The investment already exists. They've, you've already made the investment. So how do we drive impact from there? But the best way to do this is to use the impact blueprint for planning purposes. That's not the way most people work. But if you have this framework in mind, you can start driving and investing in places that you know will drive business impact. So when you want, want need to know um, what impact you or what investments you need to make, what you do is you work the impact blueprint from the right over to the left. So we know we have a vision. We know we have strategic goals we want to accomplish. And we know in order to accomplish those goals, we have specific functional goals we want to accomplish. So in order to accomplish these functional goals, what needs to happen on the job? That's what we think about. And I'm going to walk you through an impact blueprint that, you, that, um, that we use from the planning perspective as well. So the best way is to build impact into your investments is to start by thinking about what we expect to accomplish and then what's the investment we need to make. So let's say it's the beginning of the year, we have our corporate strategic goals and we need to think about how we're gonna drive those goals and we're gonna achieve these goals throughout the year. It behooves us to sit down and think about what needs to happen on the job and take some time to really think these out. And you can make some assumptions. It's okay. Like Gianni said, it's fine to make assumptions. Some will be evidence-based. We know what works. We know what doesn't work. And some may be sort of random, intelligent guesses. And that's okay, too. So the best way, honestly, to use the impact blueprint is to, is to use it for investment planning. Because that way, we're investing in areas that we know will drive our desired impact and not just guessing. So... Two ways to think about it. One, when you have a known investment and two, when you're, have a, um, when you're planning for investments to achieve goals. Okay, so what I wanna do now is walk you through an example of an impact blueprint. And this is with a known investment. And I chose something that's um, easier to think about. So I always say, okay, let's start with like measuring sales. Right. I mean, sales is it's easy to measure. Right. I mean, you guys are going to say, Stacy, why would you pick something that's so easy? Duh, that's easy for a lot of people to do. I want to show you something that's easy conceptually to understand through a sales training program. And then I'm going to show you impact blueprints I have built around areas such as diversity, equity and inclusion, leadership, um, an entire L&D function. So you can measure anything. When people tell me, oh, I can't measure leadership, I can't measure um, collaboration, you can. You can measure anything. What you have to do is decide what that looks like on the job, right? Impact doesn't happen when they walk out of a training program or when you purchase a platform. It takes some time for that to happen. And Gianni talked about that. So we need to start building out these indicators that show, hey, we are making progress in the right direction or we are not making the right progress. We need to shift and alter things a little bit. So I've got a sales example to walk you through um, as something concrete for you to understand. So let's take a known investment. Of, let's say we have a sales rep training program. We invest in a program, right? And we have a strategic goal to grow revenue to $15 million. So we already decided how we're going to achieve this goal is we've got some gaps in our sales force. So we need a sales training program. 
Okay. So in order to build out the pro, we've got our program, our investment and our training program. We need to know what needs to happen after that program to drive the impact we need to achieve our goal of $15 million. And we've got a couple of areas to think about. You have leading indicators. So I'm going to walk you through some leading indicators that we have for the sales training program. And then we have business impact measures and we have our functional goals. So this, what I'm showing you right now is the actual framework for an impact blueprint. You have the investment on the left. Again, I truncated it here and you have the strategic goals on the right and how we get from the investment to the goals is by mapping out the leading indicators and business impact measures. And I will define these and show these for to you. Okay, again, I don't see any questions coming up in the chat. If there are any questions, feel free to pop those in and I will pause and answer those. Okay, so for this example of the sales program, let's say we've got we've got a strategic goal to achieve a $15 million. In order to achieve that $15 million goal, we know that we need a 10% increase um, in annual revenue. Again, this is just all a hypothetical example I've put out here for you. So we need to have $1.5 million increase um, in revenue. So in order to achieve that, what are the goals, the quarterly goals we want to set? So let's say we say we need a 50% increase in new customer revenue. So we need to achieve 750K. Let's say we need an increase in pro um, profitability. We want to see an increase. Um, to 150K. And let's say we need an increase in new product sales of 600K. So we've got new customer revenue, profitability, and product sales. We've decided these are the three areas that we need to drive sales to achieve our goals of $15 million. Um, somebody in the chat says, what is the baseline? Um, the number of $15 million. So that is it's just a it's just a theoretical model that I put together for us today that will you would actually replace this with your actual strategic goal. I'm just using a sales example to show you how to do this. So this $15 million is something I made up. So you will have your number for your organization. I'm sure we all have profitability and revenue growth numbers in our strategic plan. So whatever your number is for your organization, you'd replace this $15 million with that number. And by the way, this is just showing, I said, corporate strategic goal number two, because you have multiple strategic goals. You would build, you could build this impact map out, impact blueprint for any of your strategic goals. So I, I, for this example, I picked one strategic goal of driving revenue. Okay, so we've got our strategic goal and we've got our functional goal. So we've got these mapped out and these are all thought through generally by the leadership team, right? And the some organizations, these are documented, um, less mature organizations or startups, for instance, they're not, they may not formally be documented. So in order to get these goals, it may require some legwork to go around and ask what, um, what are the strategic goals? Um, and if somebody cannot articulate that to you or they don't have it or they haven't thought through it, then you'll want to do that. Um, you may not have time or the, be able to put out the effort to put rigor around it, but it's smart to drill, to build out your target. So what you're doing is building a map for yourself. All the actions you will take and your organization will take will be to drive towards these goals. So if the organization doesn't provide them to you, then you need to map them out and create them you can, the best you can and use your stakeholders in the organization to help validate and verify your strategic goals. Okay, so let's say we make an investment in a sales rep training program. Um, we, I don't really want to talk about the objectives of the program. Is it blended learning? Um, was it user generated, right? We just know we're making an investment in this entire initiative. And not only did we invest in the initiative, we're investing in the sales reps to attend the training. Right. We've got lost opportunity costs for them uh, coming off the street, the selling street and to attend the training. Right. Um, we've got investments in technology to deploy the training. 
So we have some expectations on what that training program should achieve for our organization. So typically, you know, many organizations um, tend to use the, um, oh, hold on, I went backwards. There you go. Tend to use the Kirkpatrick model, right? So to me, the Kirkpatrick model, I wanted to, a lot of people use the Kirkpatrick measures. A lot of people like them, um, but it doesn't drive business impact. These can be directional indicators is how I would perceive them. The, these are outputs. These are not outcomes. Um, some people may say, well, Stacy, when you get to level four, you know, organizational impact, you know, then that's an outcome. I don't perceive these as outcomes because when you're measuring them through a survey and it's more subjective um, and you're asking learners and managers to estimate the impact they think they're having, it's not actual hard metrics where rubber meets the road. Um, I think they can be valuable, but I think they're indicators. They're not business impact measures. So you can still employ your Kirkpatrick measures, but I would look at those as more outputs um, and versus outcomes. So let's say we run this um, sales rep training program and we want to look at percent trained. You know, we'll have our percent satisfied, the percent that learned the training objectives, your typical, you know, level two, level three um, Kirkpatrick measures and the percent that feel more effective on the job. So generally, these are all survey based. These Kirkpatrick measures are generally um, I, again, it's output. It's not outcome for Kirkpatrick. So they add value, but it doesn't show business impact of your investment. So let's say we run the sales training program. We survey people. We have these numbers here about the, we know the percent that were trained. We know how many satisfied, if they're learning the objectives or not, and if they feel more effective on the job. So once we know that, so here we are making some assumptions when we're mapping this out. So we're saying, well, now we send them through our training program. We expect an increase in the number of proposals to new customers because one of our objectives in the program is to teach them how to, uh, to sell to new customers. Um, so we, and we taught, we showed them how to write these proposals that will resonate with new customers. That's part of the training program. So as a result of attending this program, we accept, we expect an increase in the number of new proposals to new customers. And with this metric, so this is a met, this is something we're going to measure. What we will do is we would set a baseline and say, okay, today we have, um, let's say, uh, 20 proposals going out to new customers a quarter. And we want to change that. We want to double that. We want 40 proposals to new customers going out a quarter. So you would set a baseline of 40 for the quarter and then per quarter. And then you're going to measure and see if you're hitting that 40 each quarter. So you set a baseline and then you also set um, a floor. So your baseline is the target and you want to set a floor. I'll say, well, maybe we'll accept 30 per quarter. So we'll accept 30. So that's our floor. So we know if we hit 30 or between 30 and 40, our programs are OK. Um, this part of our programs OK around the building proposals piece. So if we achieve and exceed our 40, that's great. Gold star for us. So what you do is you figure out what metrics you want to impact as a result of the training program. And then what is your floor number and what is your target? Um, and that kind of all sits under the impact blueprint. That's how we actually measure um, each of these metrics. So each of these boxes will be a metric that we've thought through. So another metric would be as a result of the training program, we expect to increase current customer retention. So we would have a baseline. Maybe we say our current customer retention is at 75% and we want it to be at 80%. So we would measure against our baseline. Well, technically, I don't think so. Somebody has a question here. The baseline is the KPI. Um, not really. This metric would be the KPI. So the KPI would be um, number of proposals, uh, increased in customer revenue, 
All of these box, boxes would be the KPI, would be the key performance indicator. The baseline would be how we're going to measure that indicator. Yeah, and I'm going to talk in detail in a minute about um, KPIs and leading and lagging metrics for you. So I just want to show you some example metrics that we expect as outcomes from an investment in a sales training program. Okay, and then let's say we have another a metric um, that as a result of the training program, we expect to decrease sales expenses. So let's say we train our sales groups on how to have to be more effective in virtual meetings than on site. So we are not going to invest so much in travel. Right. So we expect a decrease in sales expenses. Again, this is another metric, another KPI that we expect to impact through our investment in the sales training program. So we would set a baseline of, let's say, a reduction of 20 percent in sales expenses. So you'd set a baseline of 20 percent and a floor maybe of, let's say, 12 percent. So any a decrease anywhere between 12 and 15 percent would be would be acceptable for acceptable for us so we'd say our investment in the training program is doing what we want it to do if we see um, a decrease in sales expenses around 12 to 15 percent so that's just another metric that we decide the investment needs to impact all right and let's say we have another a, a fourth kpi of an increase in the number of new product proposals so in part of the training program we're going to train them, train them on all of our new products and how to write proposals that include the new products, how to pitch and sell in the value prop around the new proposals. So in our training program, we taught them, taught them how to write proposals for new customers and on initiatives that will increase cu customer retention, how to decrease their sales expenses and how to increase the number of, or how to increase new, uh, how to pitch new, products. All right. So we want to measure how they're impacting these four areas when they're back on the job. And then as a result of increasing new product proposals to customers, um, it's an increase of, of new proposals to customer, of proposals to new customers. We expect to see an increase of new customers, right? This is all just logically following the logical impact of what's happening on the job. So if we have an increase of proposals to new customers, as a result, I expect to see an increase in new customers, right? We're putting new proposals out there. Therefore I'll have new uh, customers. If we have an increase in customer retention, what will happen? Well, if we're retaining more of our customers, I expect an increase in profit margin because we have less lower churn. So our profit margin will be increased. Therefore, when our profit margins increased, that will help us achieve this uh, goal too of increase in profitability. So this is exactly how the investment in our training program will drive customer retention, increase profit, uh, profit margin, and we will achieve our goal of increased profitability. And then our goal of decreasing sales expenses will also increase our profit margin, which will help us increase our profitability. And our increase in the number of new product proposals will help us increase our, no, our, val, our uh, revenue in new product sales, which will then help us increase new product sales. So this is a, and this is a simple example of a logical model you can think through for an investment for a training program. Yay, you're loving it. I, lo I love hearts, I love hearts. That means it's resonating. And so you see that if you can think through this and you can get your teams to think through this, and I will tell you, this is the framework that is in my head all the time. When I'm talking to a customer or a prospect or someone on my team, I know how they think because I map the words they use and their thinking with this framework. And I'm going to show you how to think about that in a minute. Yay, somebody said crystal clear. That's great. And so this is how we're visualizing business impact. And when you can visualize it, you can communicate it. So that's the value that we're trying to add here.
Let's see, somebody has a question. If there are other improvements in manufacturing case and shop floor of many uh, Kaizons done in these improvements, can we attribute to the L&D portion? All right, so if you're familiar with the, with the Phillips model, right? I work with Jack and Patty Phillips a lot, um, and they talk about isolating the effect of L&D, right? So this is where we're kind of like marketing, right? Marketing has that problem of isolating the effect. Well, was it the social media post? Was it this ad? Was it sponsorship to this conference? What drove our business? We don't really know. It's hard to isolate, right? So, but what we can do is we can make these assumptions and educated guesses like we're doing on this impact map. And when you build this impact, impact blueprint, so let's say we know we're going to invest in this training program. Before you build the program, you build your impact blueprint, right? So you would say, we know, we're, we know we need to invest in sales training program. So we would build this impact blueprint prior to investing any time in the program because the impact you expect on the job will drive what objectives you will write for your training program. So your objectives are driven by the outcomes you expect to have, right? And then the way to think about it is um, any imp business impact measures here, you see, are dollar value. I'm going to talk to you about a minute about how to think about this because our organizations may talk about when here's a problem in organizations, right? It's around metrics. People call them different things. I saw in the chat somebody said um, KPIs. Um, some people will use leading and lagging. Some will just say metrics. Some will say analytics. And different departments will use different words. Different companies use different things. Different webinars use different things. It's all confusing. The good thing that what I like about the impact map is it helps you with a common definition in your organization. So everybody's speaking the same language because there's confusion. And when you have an impact map like this and you cluster your metrics into two areas, it helps people always think in the right direction of business impact. So we think of two areas. We have metrics that are leading indicators and business impact measures. And I'm going to show you how to think about that. So as Gianni said, he said, we have data points at our disposal today, which we can assemble into directional estimates, right? So that's the key is estimates. People don't believe estimates if they're just made randomly. People believe you if they've helped um, create that estimate and they have buy-in into that estimate. Right. Because we know classically, um, I heard on one of the sessions before, we know people support what they create. So I suggest that when you build an impact map, you build it with your stakeholders. Your stakeholders will help you do this. We're not sitting here. I'm not sitting in my home office in a vacuum creating this and making all these assumptions. I might start a draft of this. Um, impact Blueprint say, hey, from my perspective, here's the impact I'm seeing from this investment that we need to make. And I map this out. I would then take that to a stakeholder group, right, the right stakeholder group, and say, here's the draft I created. What do you guys think? Do you think this resonates with you? Is this the impact we expect to make from the sales training to achieve the goals that we have set out? And when you have the stakeholders build it, you will have their buy-in. And so your estimates will not be perceived as random or unbelievable because they built those estimates with you and they believe in it. So that's the way to make something believable and visual is to engage your stakeholders and have them invest with you as well. All right, I see in the chat I'm talking about the Phillips model. Yep. So you can. So so let me let me pause here for a minute. I will talk about that isolation effect as well. Right. So you can. So the isolation effect, you can look at it a couple ways. One, you can do a very advanced way, such as with predictive analytics. Right. So you can isolate the effect of the investment in uh, programs. I've done this before. I did this for a very large initiative for uh, the state of Minnesota here in the U.S. And the way you do that is you set up an experimental group and a control group. Right. So we all know the classic experimental model. So you can do that. 
That's a great way to do that. That's gold star if you can do that. One, you have to have the analytics rigor to do it. You have to have the time. You have to have the investment to do that. A lot of people can't do that. And we're trying to drive um, outcomes at the speed of business. Not possible in some cases. Now, there are tools out there doing that. If you can achieve that ice, that level of isolation, fantastic. Do it all day, every day. You'll get more buy-in and it's more believable because you set up an experimental study to isolate the impact. The reality is we can't really do that most of the time. Right. So what do I see? I see people fall back to their Kirkpatrick measures and say, well, this is the best we can do. This is all we've got. We've got these surveys. This is all we can do. And by the way, nobody's asking for impact. So I'm not putting any rigor into this or I don't have the analytics um, capability on my team or in the organization to deliver business impact. That's the reality of the world we live in. Right. But when you map it out like this, your level of analytic rigor doesn't matter. You set up the best you can with what you're able to achieve to show impact at the time. So the point is, if you if if nobody's asking you to uh, um, uh, to demonstrate business impact and you're not doing it, you will be asked at some point to demonstrate impact. You're going to get that email or that call and say, where are you adding value? I'm confused. I don't see we invest all this money in training in L&D. Where's your value? So somebody will ask you. And if you don't set proactively set the rules of engagement for what you will measure and how you will demonstrate value creation, then they will set the rules of engagement for you. They will decide what you want to what you need to measure, how you will measure it and what it will look like. And that's not the place you want to be, right? You want to drive this conversation. You want to show up as a strategic leader, as performance consultants. So in order to do that, I would recommend that you're more, you're proactive. And like Gianni said, you build out these estimates, you get buy-in and you have all your stakeholders involved. You show them that you're driving the rules of engagement for impact. So when I work with organizations, I say, let's build this impact map and say, look, here's how we're going to measure impact. You drive that story. You don't let somebody tell you what story you're going to tell. So that's one of the benefits of building an impact blueprint and having support from your um, stakeholders with you. So, again, you can follow the Kirkpatrick R the ROI models and though you can you can pop those metrics in here, too. Maybe um, one of these business impact measures we have is the Phillips model. Maybe we say ROI as one of these metrics. You can certainly do that because that's a business impact measure. ROI is dollars and dollars is business impact. Okay, so that was a, a, little, a little sidebar for us. The advantage of this impact model is that it's based on business metrics, which is always there in some form or other. That's right. It's there in some form or other and you can find it. And this way, you the great thing about it, guys, is you get to speak the language of the business. We're not speaking the language of L&D. Kirkpatrick's models and outcomes can be are a little bit of both. Right. And when we use the language of L&D, we don't even know we're doing it sometime because it's so native to us. So when you think about business impact measures, you're, you show up strategic and you're using the language of the business, which is exactly what we want to do. Right. We want to come off as understanding the business when you don't understand and demonstrate the language of the business, then you, you will have a problem. You're not you will not be seen as adding value or a strategic capability of the organization because what you do is not clear. OK, so. Oh, whoops, I went home. All right. So oh, now so I'll come back to the model now. So Gianni says we have data points at our disposal today, which he's right. And we can assemble those into directional estimates. So in the impact map, the leading indicators are your directional are your directional indicators. So let's say we roll out a sales, sales training program. It's going to take us a while before I can tell you we've had a decrease in sales expense or we've increased profitability. I can't roll out a program today. And in one week, tell you we've impacted the business with uh, a reduction in sales expenses 
or you've increased profit of uh, the profit margin it's going to take me a minute to do that i can do that but there's other things that have to happen for me to get there and these other things are the leading indicators so these metrics are the leading indicators to business impact um, and then you can show that we are on the path to business impact that will hold your stakeholders off for a minute when they're aware that hey we've got a plan right our plan is to drive impact it's going to take a second to get there but look what we're going to accomplish look at the needles we're going to move these lead, leading indicators are the needles we're going to move to drive business impact so i just want to align to what gianni was talking about directional estimates we have those and these aren't just me sitting here thinking about them these are us working with our stakeholders decide what the uh, directional measures will be. Okay, so did you see this pop up down here, this how and why? So when I'm building an impact map, this is how you can get your team to start thinking about it and how you can think about it and how you can build your impact map. So when you when I talk to people and I say, OK, I'm going to build a sales training program and they're going to say um, and they'll say things like, um, well, how are you going to have them write? Let's let's use this example. Right. How will you have them write new proposals? Um, how are you how are you going to get new customers? Uh, how are we going to uh, uh, increase customer retention right so I know they're thinking very tactically they're thinking of the how when they think more strategically about the why that's when they're thinking about more of these financial measures or the goals so when you talk to strategic leaders most of the time they'll talk up here over on this side of the map when you talk to more tactical people they'll talk over here on the left when I talk to L&D people and I say, OK, I want to build a sales training program, they'll say, well, so is it going to be blended learning? Are you going to have user generated content? Um, are you going to use e-learning courses? I know immediately that person's tactical. They're thinking of the how. They're not thinking of the big picture of the impact we expect to make. But when you have an impact map and you have this mapped out, they will understand the impact that all the details that they're mired in in their mind they'll understand the logical flow of how they should impact the business and you'll have leaders over here just telling you telling you i need to achieve the goals i need 1.5 million dollars in revenue i need that then i would say to them how do you think we're going to achieve this i work my way conceptually i work my way to the left of the impact so when they're over here on the right and they're all talking about goals and using some more, somebody that's more strategic, I will ask how questions to steer them like driving a car. I'm steering them left. So I'm asking them how questions so that I can get the metrics that I need to build the map out. And when they're tactical, thinking about the details over here, um, I will ask them why questions. So why do we need a blended program? Why do you think we need e-learning? Well, so that they can go back on the job and work faster, so they can learn faster, so we can flatten the learning curve. Okay, why do you need our salespeople to learn faster? Right, well, so they can make more calls, and so they can get on the calls quicker, so they can get more proposals out the door quicker. Now you're steering this conversation over to the right and you're driving them to think about business impact. So you're trying to get the people to think about across the full map and people that are really good with this can toggle back and forth. So when you're more strategic, you're thinking about the why part. And when it's necessary, you can also get a little tactical and go think about the how part. So people on your L&D teams may be focused if they're tactical, down here on the how part how are we going to do this how we write the learning objectives right so if you drive out the why questions it will help them think about that bigger picture and if they're a bigger picture person only focus on the why you ask how questions and get them thinking about the details so like i said this impact map framework is what i always have 
and my mind um, when I'm building out these maps and thinking about it and talking to stakeholders. Um, okay, so give me a thumbs up if this sounds good to you guys, if it's resonating, making sense. Okay, great. Yay, that's what we want. Oh, I didn't even ask for hearts. We got hearts. Woohoo! All right. So let's talk for a minute about the leading indicators and business impact measures. So like I said, I think of the metrics, I like to bucket them in two ways. Now, you can't really probably change your culture. If everybody calls them KPIs, perfectly fine. Just try to have a common language. And if you identify different pockets of your organization that don't have a common language, try to educate people and get a common language. Um, KPIs are very popular. So the way I think of KPIs is I can break them into two ways. I break them into leading indicators and impact measures. So leading indicators are metrics that indicate something could happen in the future. Not something happened, something could happen in the future. The impact will happen. Um, another thing, they're often called leading metrics. You hear some people will call them leading and lagging metrics. Leading metrics are, are um, business indicators. It's leading to an impact. Um, and the leading indicators can be quantitative or qualitative metrics. Let me flip back to our um, impact map here. And you see uh, increase the number of new customers. That's a quantitative metric. Increase customer retention is a quantitative metric. Um, New number of new product proposals, quantitative metrics. You could have something in here like customer satisfaction, right? That could be both. So that could be a leading indicator because customer satisfaction, you know, if it's not a metric, you may say they're highly satisfied. Um, it's a qualitative metric. So I'd say it's an indicator of business impact. Just because customers are satisfied does not mean you have uh, your driving revenue. It's an indicator that will drive more revenue because we make assumptions that they're satisfied. Therefore, they will renew and not churn. So leading indicators can be quantitative or qualitative metrics. Um, and they're usually a basic count or status. It's a quality of good or bad. And I have some examples there. And the great thing about the leading indicators is that you can see the results quickly. Right. So like Gianni says, we have indicators in our organization. We just have to use them and highlight them and call them what they are. They're indicators to business impact um, and they're needles that tell us as these needles move, we're making directional progress. And driving business impact. OK, so we've got these indicators to business impact. So what is a business impact metric? So to me, a business impact metric is a quantitative metric. So it's you and it's also called a lagging metric, right? It, it takes it lags behind in time. Some people call it KPIs. When somebody calls KPIs, it's broader. It can be leading metrics, lagging metrics, leading indicators, business impact measures. So KPIs are broad. I bucket them in my head around leading indicators or business impact measures. Um, and to me, a business impact measure always has a dollar value, right? Or a monetary value because we're in business, right? So impact is money. How do you show money? By making money or saving money? Saving money's making money. So business impact matter measures are anything that's around a dollar value. Um, revenue, operating margin, cost savings, new product sales, so anything that you can qualify, quantify in a dollar expense, I say is a um, business impact measure. So let's say I talked about customer satisfaction a minute ago. Customer satisfaction could be qualitative, but it could also be quantitative. Maybe your organization knows um, if you measure maybe your net promoter score, you know that each notch on your promoter score uh, is correlated with, uh, let's say, um, a certain dollar value is associated with, you know, $10,000 increase in revenue, you know, or 
or $10,000 increase in revenue. So then that would be a business impact measure because you know the quantitative, you know the revenue value of customer satisfaction. So, and the business impact measures take a while to see. So we need to show that we're on the right path to impacting the right metrics. So give me a thumbs up if this makes sense. All right, so good. Yay, yay. All right, so we've got indicators that are leading to business impact measures. So we can keep our stakeholders happy as long as we're showing indicators, directional indicators to impact. So here's an example. Let's say that same sales training impact blueprint we built, we've now rolled out our training program and they've had some time in the field. Um, and we color code each of our metrics based on the um, what we found, we analyzed the data. So we, we got green because we, uh, we set some baselines for all of these and we met our baselines um, and maybe our targets for each of these areas. So green, I say, hey, our program's on the right track. Our program's driving the outcomes that we expect to see. Um, now, let's look at this over here in yellow. We're not seeing the increase of proposals to new customers that we expected. And therefore, we, we did not see the increase in new customers. So red flag, red flag, there's something going on in the program here. This is not working. This branch is not working like it's supposed to. Let's go back to the program and see what we need to modify to fix this because it's not working. And by the way, it may not be anything in the program, right? On one of our previous sessions, we were talking about the manager's role. Maybe it's the managers. Maybe managers aren't supporting the proposals to new customers, right? So we need to do a deep dive and see and a little investigation and say, what's going on over here? Is it the trainings program? This is where we can start thinking about sort of like a soft isolation idea. Um, what's going on here? So we're at risk of not making an impact for new customers if we don't do something now with the program, you know, or dig into the, the, the uh, cause behind this effect going on here. But hey, we're doing a great job on this customer retention and in, uh, increase in new product proposals. Um, so we're making good, so directionally, we're looking good. I'd say by the next time we measure this, we should be hitting our business impact measures. So this is how we can show the directional indicators to our stakeholders and say, hey, it's been 30 days after the program. We're making progress in some areas. Uh, you know, we need to work on a couple areas. So no, we don't have your direct business impact to tell you yet, but we will soon. But we're going to go back and work on this uh, uh, facet of the program or uh, the outcomes that we expect and go see what's going on. So by using this impact map, you can share your results, your outcome, your outcomes. All right, then the next quarter comes and we've got everything populated. So we use this impact map as our dashboard to show the value of the investment that we made in the sales training. So we still weren't able to move the needles on this new customer revenue facet. So this Q1 goal is in red. We're at risk of not meeting this goal of increasing new customer revenue. And, you know, we're not, um, and we're, we might not be on track to increase profitability, but we're way on track to increase new product sales. So that would make our overall goal a yellow. So now we might need to go back and know where we need to tweak the, tweak the program or invest in other areas to achieve our goals of our $1.5 million increase in annual revenue. Okay, so uh, let me go back here. So does that, yeah, give me thumbs up. So you see how these directional indicators will help people understand, look, we've got, we made an investment. We're going to have an impact. It's going to take us a minute to show you the impact, but we're on our way there. And you're clear and transparent and strategic. That's how you show up. And this is how your teams will show up. So now let's look at, um, so the sales training program we talked about was, 
when you have an investment that you know, what about when you need to plan your investments, right? Which is the ideal way to do it. Because when you plan your investments, you decide what needles you need to move, then you make the investment or build the program. So you work from the right to the left on your impact map. And so let's use our same example that we did before. So if we know we want to have this $1.5 million increase in your annual revenue, what needs to happen? We work with our stakeholders to decide what needs to happen. And that's how we create all these metrics that we have. These are the exact same metrics we had before, but now we're thinking of it in a more strategic perspective. So what business impact do we need? So we build our map from the right to the left. And then when we roll out our program, we're going to reverse it, right? And show everything directionally going to the right because now we've made the investment. Now let's see if we're really making the impact that we want to create. And so I create these impact maps with organizations all the time. And what we do is I work with the stakeholders to brainstorm um, what they should be. And when they're talking, I will map them out. I will. So you can do this in a room, right? With sticky notes on a wall. We can say, okay, if it's a known investment, we've got a sales training program. What do we expect the learners to walk on the program and achieve? And you can write all these things they expect to achieve on sticky notes, right? Then you can start mapping them up in leading indicator and business impact areas. You can map them up. I do. I build these things virtually. So if we brainstormed on this call, what metrics? And I had, and these were all the metrics that we brainstormed on this working session today. I would lay them out, and I would put those that aren't quantitative, you know, or don't have a dollar value over here under leading indicators, and those that have dollar value, I put under business impact measures. And when we work through the logic of our thinking, and be sure that we have everything mapped out. So that's how you can map it out for a known investment or for investment planning. All right, so now let's walk through some best practices that I have. So one involves stakeholders. This is not a, do not work in a vacuum. And again, people support what they help create. Do not do this on your own. Even if you build a draft, have somebody else review and vet it. Because if you button this all up and roll it out, you're not going to have buy-in. So politically, you're going, you could have a problem. And they'll say, what is this thing? It doesn't make sense. Get everybody together. Build it together. And when you build these out, so for instance, this blue sky one, um, the, the, I mean, the one that we built out, let's say somebody said, well, I want to do some predictive analytics. I want to do correlation between um, those who intended the training program and those who did not, or we want to do some regressions. Well, that's great. We want to do some of that. Um, but maybe we can't do that today. We need to roll the program out. So you can have, you can include those kind of metrics and save it in the side in a file that's your blue sky metric. So you can save it, um, save it and you can refer back to it and have a goal for your analytics program of where you want to get to. So impact blueprints are great for illustrating the impact of soft skills because it makes them measurable and visible. So I'm going to show you one in a minute that I did for a diversity and inclusion department. So let's say we've got a leadership program. Here's the question. What do you expect? So I would say if you came to me and said, Stacy, we need to measure the impact of the leadership program. I'd say, why do you need a leadership program? Think about it. I'm starting over on the right hand side of the map. I'm saying, why? Well, because we have to, because we know we need strong leaders. Why do you need strong leaders? Um, because we need to keep our employees focused on the task. What employees need to be stay, stay focused on the task? So I would ask you why questions to get through what you want the impact to be. Th this is what the challenge is with soft skills, right? Sales is easy. I know what needles I need to move. Leadership you don't intuitively know what needles you want to move. But if you get in a room with others and you sit down, and you think about it, you actually will come up with the needles you need to move. The needles you need to move generally are the KPIs and the goals for their department or their function or the organization. So you can get that down to tactical where the rubber meets the road metrics if you just think through it. 
So that's what you have to do with soft skills is just think through it about what it looks like on the job. What does a strong leader look like? Let's think of an exemplar. We have somebody in a department that's a fantastic leader. Why are they a fantastic leader? Because they do, you know, A, B, and C on the job. Well, great. We want that role model. We want that behavior for everybody. So that A, B, C is what you will have um, as your metrics. So you can measure soft skills as well. Um, and you can use your blueprint to remove barriers to impact. So let's say we want to put customer satisfaction on there. Like it's important that we show customer satisfaction. Well, we're not measuring customer satisfaction today. We don't have a tool that can do it. We don't have it defined. Everybody hasn't bought into the net promoter score, whatever the issue is. So if you want to measure impact and we know we want something like, again, like the customer satisfaction, then we know we need to invest in the tool and invest in the process to measure customer satisfaction. And if you put that on your impact blueprint, you can now go build a business case to capture the data and to build the analytics that, that your stakeholder groups thinks is important. And when you have leadership build your impact blueprint, they have buy-in, they'll remove the barriers, they'll give you the budget, they'll help you accomplish it because they know what you're trying to accomplish because they helped you build this plan out. And you can train all L&D staff to be more strategic by using the impact blueprint framework. So when you have an instructional designer working on a program or somebody in the analytics team that's just focused on maybe crunching the numbers, always ask them to think about the impact and they think through the impact blueprint that will help. And I've even worked with people that were more tactical or even in tactical roles like instructional designers or curators, and they have, um, a tactical leader, they don't have a strategic leader and they're actually more strategic than their leader. I tell them to use the impact blueprint framework to manage up. So if they want to think about this, how and why ask your manager to manage up, ask your manager, well, why do we need to build this program? Mr. And Mrs. Leader and force them to think through it. So you can use the impact blueprint framework to manage up and to manage your teams. Um, and update your blueprint as you need to, you know, keep it alive. You can remove metrics. This is your working version. Change it. It's not nothing set in stone with it. Um, and again, I recommend the bucketing your KPIs or your metrics into leading indicator and business indicator language, business um, impact measures, because that language helps you have a common language across the board. And to optimize impact, include your impact blueprint in training events. So imagine if we had the sales training event and we put our impact blueprint up there and we said, hi, guys, welcome to the training program. Everyone, here's what we we the company has invested in this program for you. And here's what we expect you to accomplish, accomplish back on the job. So I would show them the blueprint that you built. So the learners are really clear on what they need to do back on the job. And hey, by the way, after you attend this program, let us know if you're able to do all this back on the job. We're going to measure you. We're going to follow up with you. And if you think what we covered today will help you drive impact, that's great. And if it's not going to empower you to be smarter on the job, let us know. So that's a, another way to use your impact. I'm going to skip this one just in, in sake for sake of time. So here's a quote to keep in mind by George Box. I, I've been using this for years. He says, all models are wrong, but some are useful, right? We're building out this model. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have people complain. You didn't include me. I don't believe in the metrics, blah, 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 right? Look, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be useful. And if it's not useful, we're going to change our metrics around, change our thinking around. Um, we're mature enough to do that. So we're going to find value and it will be useful. And another quote that I love that I've used for years, this can get you out of a bind too, that um, by, well, I don't know. They actually don't know who first made this quote, but this is the most common quote I've seen is by Andrew Lang. He uses statistics as a drunken man uses a lamppost for support rather than illumination. So that's what your impact blueprint is. It's illuminating the impact we're expecting to make. So, We've got a few minutes left. Let me run through a few example blueprints to show you. So they don't all have to be formatted the same or look the same. You want them all laid out in a logical 
format for logical thinking. So this is an example of one I built out for a diversity, equity, and inclusion, a whole function at a consulting company. They had a whole department, um, a diversity department, and they made investments in all these programs and they had they wanted to achieve all these goals. So I worked with them to build out the impact map of the impact that they expected their diversity uh, function to drive. People will say, how do you measure diversity? Well, what's important to your business, right? That's where you, like I gave you the leadership example. This is where you have to think through, what do you expect to happen on the job? All right, here's an example of one that I built for an L&D function, for a whole function. So we had the whole global L&D function was called the learning universe. So the learning universe has all these programs, all this stuff that they do. And now what do you expect them to, how do you expect them to impact the business? You've got this operations part. We expect them to operate within budget. You know, that will achieve these business impact measures, which will help us achieve the organizational goals. So you can build this from micro investments like a training program and LXP from EdCast, or you can build it for macro. It depends on the perspective you want to take. Here's one that I created for what I did was I literally took, I talked to nobody in the company. I took an annual review of the consulting company's website and built out their training program. This was a consulting session that I wanted, a consulting group, um, a work that I wanted. So what I did was to, before I had the first meeting with the executive leaders, I took their annual report and I built out this impact blueprint for them. And I said, look, I know that you're making strategic investments, right? I made some assumptions. I read their annual report. And as your strategic investments, I know here are the things you want to accomplish. And here are the business impact measures that are important to you because I found this in your annual report and I know what your goals are. So talk about impressed. I just looked at the annual report, built out an impact map and said, hire me now because I know what you're trying to accomplish and I know how to get you there. I demonstrated this and made it visual to them. Here's one that I did. This was a four year long longitudinal study that I did for the state of Minnesota uh, that I talked about with the high school students. Uh, United Way invested $5 million in these programs. So what I did was set a very robust impact map to um, demonstrate each semester, I would roll this out to all the stakeholders. And as you can imagine, the beginning, all this stuff over on the right was gray. We didn't have time to measure this. But then as we went through the end of four years, here's the impact that we made to the goals they wanted to achieve. And if you see when the program ended, I still not was not able to say if people were able to persist in the program and get a post-secondary degree because I didn't know if they finished college. The program ended. So I was transparent about that. Look, we made an impact. But look, there's these two areas that your investment is not really impacting. So we use this to communicate to the schools and the um, and United Way. Yay, it's resonating. So one last thing. I know you guys love metrics like I do. I know you love analytics. So I've got some QR codes for some good references, some books you're interested in. Um, and we can get these to you as well. And then I want to let you know that we are going to have, um, we're going to draw three random winners uh, to send my book to. So if you're interested, send an email um, with, send an email to marketing at edcast.com with a subject line book drawing. Marketing at edcast.com with a subject line book drawing. And um, we will randomly select three winners and mail you a hard copy of the book. So marketing at edcast.com book drawing. And here's my LinkedIn. I'd love to link in with you. Please snap that QR code. Find me on LinkedIn. I think I'm, I don't know if there's another Stacy Boyle in there. Um, but that's what we have today. I made it just in time. Thank you everyone for attending the um, EdCast learning health index summit 2021 we hope you enjoyed it and feel free to reach out connect with us and don't forget email marketing at edcast.com with a subject line uh, book drawing to get a chance to win the book thank you everyone it was great to hear you and great to talk to you
I wish I had time to answer more of the chat. So connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll answer your questions there. Enjoy your day.